Yeah, but but you see, um, the thing that obviously would have like galvanized the early believers would would have been the witness uh, or the the witness reports of Jesus resurrecting. But Jesus only appeared to the apostles. This reportedly only appeared to the twelve and to the apostles uh, and to the women. Um, and then it's reported that he also appeared to last of all to, to Paul. Eventually that person will take their position. So do you believe that Jesus wasn't God, but eventually he will become no, God? No, 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 no but remember the Father's eternal. Yeah. So the Father's always going to be there. So what happens yeah. is, is that Jesus is inheriting like God's um, something else. Do you want to do it like <laughs> Yeah. It's, 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 Does that make any difference? No, I think it doesn't focus, you see. Okay, yeah. it's fine. But, but, uh, but, yeah. but I mean, do you, I, I don't know if you, you could, you could yeah. continue, because maybe you could do it earlier next week. Yeah, yeah, okay yeah. then, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, uh, right, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. All right, yeah. I see, yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck. Um, yeah, uh, we can continue another time then. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Um, All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we discussed the. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite, quite a bit. So as we well. could do yeah. like the, the sonship yeah. parts because there's actually a few, True. few yeah. other verses. Okay. Because yeah. admittedly, I actually. Use I'm, it. Yeah. I, I mean, like, for Muslims, uh, like the Bible is not 100% like uh, Muslim or Islam. Like we accept the Bible doesn't satisfactorily agree with Islamic doctrines, mm. uh, but th those parts that don't disagree, uh, we find they originally uh, originate from Paul, the differences, and not from the man Jesus from history. Oh, uh, it, it, yeah, but that's what the thing about it is that when you listen to some Christian sport, yeah, you would get the impression that because I've heard um, I've heard say that about yeah, I feel like Min likes to say a lot that. Jesus came with one thing and then Paul came and changed it all. So, and, but the thing about it is that... I mean, that is to also give Paul too much credit because there were other like preachers before Paul as well. Uh, um, yeah, Paul... Like, yeah, but I think it's because Paul was the scholar. So that's why he had... That's the oh, advantage that he had. Because obviously the other apostles, they, they wouldn't have... Um, they would have done more talking. Mm. But because Paul was already educated, to be educated, you usually do a lot of writing. Mm. So he's he's obviously been way more skilled yeah, than the other yeah. other apostles in writing, and maybe seems that's like, one of the reasons why like he it, was yeah. yeah he was chosen. That's actually one of the reasons why scholars don't think Peter wrote Second Peter as well. Yeah, cause because he's a fisherman. It's, it's yeah. highly literate. And, no, because yeah. he would have been someone yeah. else yeah. who who this basically would have been dictated because even like. I don't know if you, when you read Hebrews, you notice when you read, get to the end, it, it tells you that it's actually Tim, Timotheus that wrote it. So, it's, but it tells you he did, I think, um, just let me see what it says. Because it, you actually... I mean, traditionally, it's believed that Paul wrote Hebrews. Yeah, but if you actually, right. the last, because on the last verse, it, yeah. sorry, it tells you, um, yeah, because the last verse, 25, says, Grace be with you all, amen, written to the Hebrews from Italy by Timothy. So so that shows he was dictated. So so someone dictated it, and Timothy was the one who actually did the actual okay. writing. Is that the last verse of Timothy? No, no, of the Hebrews. Second, uh, uh, Hebrews, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I didn't know Timothy was mentioned in Hebrews. Yeah, but obviously that might not necessarily be the same Timothy as... Oh yeah, that's cause, true, cause there they, could they, be more they, than yeah, one yeah, Timothy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but with Second Peter, um, the other thing is, um, it speaks of people apostating or losing hope because Jesus hasn't yet returned. Um, oh. And this didn't happen until after the destruction of the temple in AD 70. And by this time, Paul and Peter, they would have now gone or passed yeah. away. Yeah, but, but you see, um, the thing that obviously would have like galvanized the early believers would, would have been the witness uh, or the the witness reports of Jesus resurrecting. So, 
But Jesus only appeared to the apostles. It's reported he only appeared to the twelve and to the apostles uh, and to the women. Um, and then it's reported that he also appeared to last of all to, to Paul. Oh yeah, but he did say uh, five, he says five hundred in that same five hundred. But then Paul is the last one that Jesus appears to, according to Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was a, it was a quite it was a few years after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so um, after that, the, Jesus doesn't appear to anyone else. Yeah, because um, the other thing is I don't know if you know in um, in Acts twenty, and, and then it's only fifty days after the ascension, after Jesus is taken up, is when the disciples yeah, then yeah, publicly yeah, yeah. Uh, proclaim. Um, the, you know, the, the ministry uh, yeah. or pro publicly proclaim Jesus. Yeah. Um, but prior to that, um, there is um, no kind of like public preaching of Jesus being resurrected. Or and by this time, um, it, it's just based upon uh, people preaching the faith mm. and whether people choosing to believe in it or not. But it's not based upon any kind of. Um, uh, a peril call like proof or evidence it's just more people like how we are now like discussing it yeah uh, 2000 years later we're there now discussing it 50 days now after uh, yeah. the event yeah because yeah, cause we're using the bible to reason and discussing it means this or whether it means something else mm. so similarly they're also debating with other jews as well over the uh, the hebrew bible about its proper interpretation but this is now 50 days later where well you me and you it's like we're 2000 years now mm. uh, we're debating what, what happened yeah but but when you actually read you, you could tell that the the main um like influx of believers was after the holy spirit came yeah, it's fine you can walk past it but... mm. uh yeah it was, it was when the holy spirit came yeah and you could read various uh like chapters where he says like this amount of thousands or that amount of thousands of people but again the holy spirit is appearing to just the apostles or to the disciples like he's uh, aiding the holy the, the apostles in their mission yeah of but preaching but, and healing but uh, but but if you notice you find a few verses where it says that they did do signs and wonders so it yeah, was the holy spirit the holy spirit yeah them, would have been yeah. the one uh, allowing them to do that but so, in terms of second peter um, it speaks about like the great apostasy uh, because uh, people were beginning to doubt, uh, you know, whether Jesus will come back or not, because they see like many of the elders now dying, and Jesus still hasn't yet returned. Mm. And um, this didn't happen until like uh, you know many years after now, Peter and uh, Peter and Paul have now died. Yeah. Uh, so this is one of the reasons why scholars don't think uh, Peter wrote Second Peter because this didn't happened until after the temple was destroyed oh, yeah, in yeah. AD 70. Yeah, yeah I, I know. And the, the other thing is also that, um, like you're saying about, the, um, I don't, I think Paul was pretty much the only, because cause there, was, there wasn't any, yeah, the only mention you see of someone like writing was Paul. Because um, I think, did, I don't know if Peter, in the Peter yeah, one, it actually uh, says. That's interesting, yeah. Um, See if Peter said that I mean, there is the epistle of James and the book of Revelations, which is other than Paul. Like, you know, like first, like the epistles of John, um, yeah. as well as James and then the book of Revelations. They're not written by Paul. Yeah, because the other thing about like when you look in John, he's talking, but you notice he doesn't mention anything about writing. So it's only in Paul's epistles, that, if I remember, where he actually says he's writing. So, so it's as if the... James says in Paul's epistles, that is, right? Hmm? James says he's writing. It, no, 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 no. Paul says it. So, so if oh, you okay. actually read uh, um, the, uh, like you know things like, um, it, well, I think most of them, Paul will say at some point, I write this letter to you. So he actually mentions writing in the actual. Oh yeah, like he says, I wrote to you previously yeah, yeah. in First Corinthians. Yeah, yeah. Even though technically First Corinthians isn't the first letter that he wrote to the Corinthians but he wrote previously before yeah, yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so, so what I'm saying is that you only find it's Paul that says that. So yeah. I, I, I would have no problem believing that all the others, it was someone else that wrote what they, what people told them. Mm -hmm. So, But with Second Peter, um, it's more to do with the circumstances in which it's written in. Mm. Uh, it, it seems to be written at a time when none of the apostles are now alive. 
like the, the, the first eyewitnesses have now all passed away. Right. Hence why people are doubting and living. Well, but when you say not written, you, you, you mean in terms of that the time they found the manuscripts? Um, in terms of um, the authorships, you know, mm. the authorship of like Second Peter rather than the manuscript. I mean, right. the manuscript of Two Peter would be like no late than fourth century, for example. Right. Because right. it would appear in the Codex Sinaiticanus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but in terms of when Second Peter was written, uh, most scholars think it was written in the second century, right. rather than in the first century, it was written by Peter. Yeah, but but see, the other thing about it is that. It, in is fact, this... scholars think Second Peter is the last document to be written out of the 27 books right. that appear in the New Testament. 2, two Peter is the last document to be written, and 1 Thessalonians is the first document to be written. Mm. So between 1 Thessalonians and 2 Peter, there's like a 100-year period. Right. So 1 right. Thessalonians was maybe written in the year AD 50, mm. and 2 Peter may have been written like in... 150 CE, right. so that's like a hundred year yeah, 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 no, period when the New Testament reaches completion. Yeah, because I have to admit that I don't really look into the like the history side of things, because mm -hmm. I suppose um, because I look on the Bible as being something I follow for like salvation, mm -hmm. so it's down to me to decide whether I... Um, I, I look on it as being um, God is speaking through it. Since you've read the Quran, by the way, what do you mm. understand the Quranic message? Uh, what the Quran could be saying? Uh, well, um, about salvation. Well, I suppose that's, that's the thing about it is that um, I remember that there's not some things that um, uh, how can I say? It's, it's just hard to say in the. Um, I suppose one example is I I don't know what, what your knowledge of the the Quran is because I tried to like ask um, actually it was Lamin this question and he gave me like a strange answer um, because one you know like when you read in the Bible where uh, it, Jesus uh, talks about the um, he gives his sermon on the mount and he mentions things like how you should treat other people so what I asked him is is there anything in the the Quran which is similar where it like explains how to treat like uh, unbelievers. Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, there's many places. Um, there's many lists that people have compiled of mm. different kind of passages of how you behave and how you treat one another. Oh, but what about uh, unbelievers? So when it comes to unbelievers, you can mm. go to, for example, Surah number sixty. Mm. Uh, I think it's verse seven or eight and nine, somewhere down there. Yeah. Um, it basically says that Allah doesn't prohibit you from showing kindness um, to those that have not fought with you on the account of your religion oh, nor yeah, yeah. have driven you out of your own homes yeah. um, and it even goes on to say I think in the next verse uh, in the very next verse um, that those that you regard as being your enemies mm. uh, maybe it be that God will dwell friendship between you and your enemies and turn them into your friends yeah um, and also the elsewhere the Khan um, says uh, but, but I suppose there aren't, there aren't any parts where it's like a, in a little bit more detail because you know like in the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus says like if someone takes your coat you give them your cloak or you should you know turn the other cheek and stuff like that mm -hmm. so do you know if there's any passage where, where yeah, it's so a bit more detailed there about there is like for example like the Khan says to repel evil is good mm. so it's like someone does something bad to you uh, the Quran says, like in response, uh, uh, repel, repel, like in, in something good, mm. rather than like uh, returning the evil. Right. Yeah, I suppose you know where that one is. Oh uh, yeah, it's, it's it's Surah forty something. Yeah. Um, I, I'll just uh, quickly Google it for you. Um, also, the Quran speaks about like uh, being kind to your parents, to your mother and father. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, in terms of um, repelling evil with good. Uh, so, but, but, but I suppose the the, the reference uh, in the Quran is Surah forty something. It's 
I suppose it, it doesn't say whether it's, it's Muslim or it includes unbelievers. It includes everyone because it doesn't just say Muslim, but it means anyone. And mm. also it applies, you know, the evil that's done to you could apply, like it could be a, a, a non-Muslim. And so the Quran says in response mm. uh, to do good or to do that which is better yeah. than what they've done to you. Um, I've got like a list of places like for example the Quran says uh, don't lie chapter 22 verse 13 uh, do not lie chapter 49 verse 12 uh, to feed the poor chapter 22 verse 36 uh, do not lie chapter 49 verse 12 uh, to keep your house chapter 5 verse 89 uh, don't take bribes uh, chapter 27 verse So yeah, in chapter 17 verse 23, yeah. it says uh, not to be rude to your parents, even if they are like one of the polytheists or pagans. Uh -huh. but, but I suppose the... <laughs> so let, let me look that up, mm. so just to make sure that... says to basically to, to be kind to your non-Muslim parents right. and to like listen to them and the only time in which you don't obey them is like when they if they force you to commit um, you know shirk yeah. which is the act of um, associating yeah, so uh, with God yeah. yeah other than that the Quran says that you should be kind to your non-Muslim parents right this isn't the, the, the reference but they are elsewhere in another place yeah yeah Okay, well, what was the um, but but you know the, all those ones you um, yeah. found. Yeah. The, the, is there any indication of whether which ones are related to unbelievers, which ones aren't? Uh, I mean, to oh. me, they're not specific. 
Yeah. Uh, that, that is general. And what Muslim commentators in the Quran say is when the Quran is saying something in general, mm. uh, then we don't make it into something specific unless if we have like another verse of the Quran that specifies it. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, uh, we'll just leave it as a general verse since the Quran is, is meant intended to be a universal book. Yeah. For all times, for all places. Hmm. But in, in terms of like being kind even to your non-Muslim parents, hmm. I'll, I'll give you the reference to that. Uh, being kind. It's like you tool up man. <laughs> And you got internet or one of them? Yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't yet transferred my own phone. Right. Okay, let me see if I can find the best sign on this website. Mm. <laughs> yeah, um, it's in Surah Luqman, uh, chapter 31, verse 15. Um, it, it basically says that if they, meaning your parents, uh, strive with you to make you to join in worship with me, other than that which you have no knowledge, uh, then obey them not, but behave with them in the, in the world kindly, and follow the path of him who turns to me in repentance and in obedience. So it still says to treat them with kindness, mm. but just don't obey them yeah, if they yeah. teach you to worship other gods besides the God of Abraham and of Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob. Yeah, because it, it, it seems like it's saying if they're Christians, because it's only the... It's only Not the necessarily, it doesn't specify. I mean, in the context, um, most Muslims at the time were from a pagan or polytheist background, mm. you know, the Arab pagans. And so in that in this context, like the Quran is being revealed and saying that you should be kind to even your pagan parents, right. but just don't obey them with regards to religion. But you still treat with them, you still your conduct with them, you still you treat them with kindness and you look after them. Okay. Yeah. Shall, shall we end it because um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we'll yeah. carry on next time. But thank you, uh, yeah. Michael. All right. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, All right. The way you conducted yourself okay. and everything, so, yeah. and your patience as well. So, for me having.